We have come, FDR contended, to a clear realization of the fact that true individual freedom cannot exist without economic security and independence. Necessitous men are not free men. What he then proposed would be seen as far left today, though as he reminded his fellow Americans, was not a repudiation of the promises enshrined in the Declaration and the Bill of Rights, but a continuation and realization of them. Indeed, only with economic rights could political rights be made real. As Roosevelt said, In our day, certain economic truths have become accepted as self-evident. A second Bill of Rights, under which a new basis of security and prosperity can be established for all, regardless of station or race or creed. The rights Roosevelt was proposing, a right to a home, to health care, to earn enough money to live comfortably, a guaranteed job, would be called socialism or even communism by today's conservatives. Or whatever they might be labeled, they were rooted, as FDR made clear, in America's promise of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Empowered by the aspirations of those who had fought the Depression and were now fighting fascism, Roosevelt was projecting a path to a better, brighter, happier, and healthier future. All of these rights, he said, spell security. And after this war is won, we must be prepared to move forward in the implementation of these rights to new goals of human happiness and well-being. But FDR knew all too well that there were those who would fiercely oppose them, as they always had. And he warned his fellow citizens against what he called the grave dangers of rightist reaction.